In this lesson, we'll increase your understanding of the electrical system by showing what happens during normal engine startup. We'll not go into normal and company-specific procedures. But you'll get something you don't normally get when flying, diagrams while you operate the panels. We'll begin by showing how the batteries can power all the DC system apart from the secondary DC buses. With the battery master and the three battery switches off, only the battery bus is powered, providing power for basic consumers such as emergency lighting and the PA system. Now, switch on the battery master switch. All three batteries are now powering the essential buses, so consumers such as the beta warning horn are powered. Now switch in the charging circuit for the main battery. Touch the main battery switch. The main battery is powering the right main feeder bus and right main distribution bus that is currently not being charged because there are no other power sources. Similarly, with the standby and auxiliary battery switches on, the auxiliary battery powers the left main feeder and the left main distribution buses. But a diode prevents the standby battery from powering the main feeder bus. Notice that the EPCU keeps all four DC bus ties open. Check the battery loads and DC bus voltages on the MFD electrical page. We now need AC consumers powered. So, with AC power connected, switch on AC external power. Touch the AC external power switch. Verify that AC external power is indicated on the MFD electrical page. This means that it has been validated. We now have the variable AC buses, the galley buses, and the TRUs powered. And from there, the DC secondary feeder and secondary distribution buses. Notice that the EPCU closes the vertical bus ties. Now, normal operation is to ensure that the DC gen switches are on, ready for engine starting. To close the main bus tie, and to ensure that the AC gen switches are on, ready for the AC generators to come online. Note that even though the DC gen and AC gen panel switch positions are on, the real switches stay open until their power sources are live. This is to protect the system, in particular the TRUs, from overloading. But we can't start an engine from AC external power. After an APU start from batteries, the APU GCU converts to a generator powering the DC system buses and charges the three batteries. The EPCU opens the vertical bus ties because APU DC power has priority over TRU DC power, keeps the main bus tie closed so that the APU can feed both sides of the DC system but keeps the secondary bus tie open. To show the relationship between the APU and DC external power, let's now add DC external power. Touch the DC external power switch. Once the EPCU validates it, you see the DC external power indicator on the MFD electrical page. External DC is now the main power source for the DC system, taking priority over the APU and disconnecting it. However, when APU power is available, you would normally start engines from the APU. So with DC external power switched off and disconnected, we'll now start engine number two from the APU. Notice that during the starting sequence, a diode prevents the standby battery from powering the main feeder bus, even though its panel switch stays on. 
The reason for this is to maintain supply to the essential buses. But the other two batteries assist in the start process. When the engine is up to speed, the DC starter generator becomes a generator. The standby battery is reconnected to its charging bus and the number two GCU contactor closes, bringing its generator online in parallel with the APU. When the prop unfeathers, AC generator number two comes up to speed and supplies both variable AC buses by cross tie. You should now disconnect AC external power before starting engine number one. Touch the AC external power switch when starting engine number one. Once again, the standby battery is isolated during starting, but reconnected when the engine is up to speed. The generator comes online in parallel with the APU. But if you were using DC external power, the EPCU would prevent the generators from coming online because DC external power has priority. After the prop unfeathers, AC generator number one will supply AC power. So both variable AC buses are powered by their own side AC generators. After verifying that all electrical voltages and loads are normal, you can now switch off the APU generator. Normal practice is to disconnect the main bus tie and let the EPCU take care of bus fault monitoring. Touch the main bus tie switch. The electrical system is now fully operational with all bus ties 